um, carrying six NASA instruments, uh, intuitive machines. Imagine if the next gold rush wasn't on our planet, but 238,855 miles above us, on the silvery surface of the moon. Forget panning for gold in the rivers or digging for diamonds in the mines. The real treasure might just be floating above us every night. The moon could transform not just the future of space travel, but the very fabric of our technological and economic landscapes. Moon from a romantic date. The moon is more than just a celestial body orbiting Earth. It's a potential gold mine of resources. It's rich in rare earth metals like neodymium and lanthanum, key components in modern electronics such as smartphones and speakers. Beyond these, the moon also houses abundant supplies of silicone, titanium, and aluminum. Here on Earth, these rare earth elements are difficult to extract, but the moon might just be the new hotspot for these elements and whoever controls them might hold the key to the future of tech. Before we continue this lunar adventure, if you're enjoying this journey through space and the mysteries it holds, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more stellar content. Now, back to the moon. Did you know the moon also has lunar crete? This unique material, essentially concrete made from moon dust, opens up exciting possibilities for constructing structures on the moon. Imagine building bases or habitats using materials sourced directly from the lunar surface. Scientists have also discovered that it's possible to grow plants, known as regolith, in lunar soil. Space spinach, anyone? The real game changer, however, is helium-3. This rare isotope is seen as a potential clean energy source for future fusion reactors. While scarce on Earth, the moon holds a significant amount of helium-3, accumulated over billions of years. The only problem is that it's super tricky to fuse, almost like trying to bake a cake in a volcano. Countries like China and India, as well as private companies such as SpaceX, are showing great interest in the moon. They're sending missions to explore its resources, much like a modern gold rush. The idea is to find out how much valuable material the moon holds. But what does this mean for our future? What would happen if we start extracting these resources? Could we see lunar billionaires emerging? Or maybe even lunar-themed entertainment and innovations? It's a thrilling thought, but also one that raises many questions about the future of lunar exploration. Among the moon's treasures, helium-3 stands out. It's a potential fuel for nuclear fusion, offering cleaner energy than traditional sources like uranium. When Apollo astronauts brought back moon samples, they discovered this valuable resource. But even after decades, we haven't started mining helium-3. Why, you might ask? Well, because extracting energy from fusion is incredibly difficult. Also, helium-3 is scarce, even on the moon. You need to process vast amounts of lunar soil to collect a significant amount. And then there's the problem of bringing it back to Earth without breaking the bank. The challenges and future of lunar mining. Sending stuff to the moon is really expensive. Just moving one pound there can cost between $100,000 and $400,000. So, if we think about mining the moon, where we'd need to send a lot of equipment, the costs would be huge. Even sending a thousand tons could cost between $200 billion and $800 billion. So, where does that leave our lunar gold rush? Helium-3 mining on the moon is an exciting concept, but it's still in the early stages. The potential of helium-3 as a clean energy source is immense, but the technology to mine and utilize it efficiently is still under development. Why do we have conventional fusion reactors like the massive ITER in France, which are space-age pressure cookers that reach scorching temperatures? But to make helium-3 fusion work, we'd need even hotter temps and bigger reactors. Sounds like we're cooking up a cosmic barbecue. Gerald Kulchinski, the fusion wizard from the University of Wisconsin, has been cooking up something special. He's working on a reactor that cuts down on particles. And then there's helium-3 fusing with itself. Kulchinski says it's a game changer, but seems that we are waiting for a space age miracle. This brings us to an important question. Is helium-3 mining a realistic future energy solution, or is it still a distant dream? Would you consider being part of a lunar mining mission? Meanwhile, real progress is being made in lunar exploration. The Chinese probe Chang'e 4 is already researching the moon's far side, and it might help in understanding the feasibility of mining helium-3. The European Space Agency is also actively involved, exploring ways to use lunar resources not just for energy, but to support a potential lunar colony. 
Imagine a neighborhood on the moon powered by helium-3. The ESA's vision goes beyond mining. They're considering the moon as a base for further space exploration, using its resources for fuel and support. As we venture further into space, the moon's resources have caught the attention of visionaries like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. With their companies, Blue Moon and SpaceX, they're exploring the potential of long-term stays on the moon and, importantly, the extraction of its valuable resources. But how exactly would mining on the moon work? Unlike Earth, the moon's environment requires specialized equipment and technology. Companies like SpaceX are developing reusable rockets to make transporting equipment more feasible. However, the process is still in its early stages. And let's not forget, we need some seriously smart robots and machines that don't need coffee breaks or weekends off. Before we start our lunar gold rush, we need sustainable habitats on the moon, like a space Airbnb. Good news, we found water up there. It opens the possibility of using local resources for life support and maybe even fuel. One of the most groundbreaking technologies for lunar habitation is 3D printing. This technology could enable us to construct habitats, vehicles, and even everyday tools directly on the moon using local materials. Imagine printing your own moon house or a moon car. So are we ready to turn the moon into a giant mining field or will it remain a cool nightlight in the sky? What do you think? But here's the space soap opera twist. There's hardly any cosmic laws about this. Navigating the unknown. In 1979, the Moon Treaty was introduced, aiming to declare the Moon as the common heritage of mankind. Its goal was for all nations to share the Moon's resources fairly and responsibly. However, major spacefaring nations didn't sign it, leaving the Moon's legal status somewhat ambiguous. Apparently, sharing isn't as fun as keeping all the shiny things. So what happens when there's no space sheriff in town? A lunar gold rush, that's what. It's every country and company for themselves, racing to bag the moon's treasures. Imagine the Wild West, but with fewer horses and more rockets. The impact of lunar material on Earth. What happens when we start bringing back bits of the moon to Earth? From a physical standpoint, the moon is incredibly massive, weighing about 73 quadrillion tons. Even if we were to bring back a ton of lunar material every day, it would take us over 200 million years to remove just 1% of its total mass. So, in terms of the moon's orbit or its effects on Earth's tides, there's little immediate concern. And for all the beach lovers out there, don't worry. This won't send the moon spiraling away or play pinball with our tides. There are also ethical considerations to think about. How will future generations view our decisions to extract resources from the moon? Unlike Earth, the moon doesn't have an ecosystem, but that doesn't mean our actions won't have consequences. Disturbing lunar landscapes for mining or construction could have unforeseen effects on the moon's surface and potentially on its interaction with Earth. As we continue to push the boundaries of space exploration, we must ask ourselves, what kind of legacy do we want to leave in space? How do we balance our scientific and economic pursuits with respect for the natural and cultural significance of celestial bodies like the moon? As we wrap it up, here's the million dollar question. Will we see lunar mining and helium-3 fusion in our lifetimes, or is it just starry-eyed dreaming? Are we on the brink of a fusion revolution, or is this just a space saga with more cliffhangers than episodes? Share your thoughts below. Until next time.